Now over to a man who's perfectly in proportion, Chef Mark. Hi, morning. I'm joined by Dowett in the kitchen today, so welcome. Oh, thank you. And we are cooking, cooking an Ethiopian dish today, and I know absolutely nothing about Ethiopian cookery, so I'm really looking forward to this. I can now recognise some of the ingredients, but we've got a few that we don't recognise. So what are we going to be cooking today? Today we're going to cook, this is a traditional Ethiopian food. We mm -hmm. call it dorawat. It's a bit spicy. Yeah, we like spice. And, and we're going to enjoy it with injera. And this is a traditional bread or wow. loaf. And that looks absolutely fantastic as well. So we're going to serve this dish later on the show um, and uh, learn about Ethiopian cookeries. Thank you very much, Holly. Right, here we are in the cafe kitchen. And uh, what, thank you yeah. so much for being here. This is yeah. fantastic. So your recipe is in this book. Tell us more about this recipe book, A Taste of Culture. Yeah, Taste of Culture. There is many cultural foods in this book. And one of the book is the Ethiopian Dorowat. That the, is a very spicy one. That's what you are going to see today. OK, and why is this so popular in Ethiopia? Ah, uh, well, it, this is a cultural thing, you know, just the Doro, even actually just the, the girls are trained how to make this one, otherwise hard to get a husband. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> OK, right. Well, Mark's a great chef, you're a great chef. This is going to be fantastic. And this book, too, going to a great cause. So make sure you pick yourself up a copy. We'll give you details soon. Uh, what do we need to start off with, David? Well, this is the onion. Just uh, We have to just uh, put it on the pan until yep. the colour is turning to brown. Yep. And then after that, just you will put just one by one all the, the spices there. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, sure. What do you like the most garlic. about this? And, and a chicken. You know, this, this is cultural, the taste is nice, and plus to that also this... And do you know about the wishbone? The wishbone? Yes. Where you make a wish? Yes. Yes. Oh, I don't know if in your culture. In our culture, it's after we eat, you know, the, the chicken just... Yeah, and then grab it we, and we pull. place this one. The person who takes the biggest part, you know, he won the game. Oh, no, that's cool. So, that's the same rules we have. There you yes, go. You see? <laughs> yeah. So you can have anything. So, yeah. Well, we don't do that enough in New Zealand, oh, you yeah. see? So I'm pleased yeah. you reminded us about that. You see that all the so, time as a kid. So we brought it back to you. And yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. And how long have you been in New Zealand? Uh, since 1998. Right. So you've been yes. here for ages. Yeah. Do you love it? Oh, this is a piece of heaven, no? Oh, nice. Yeah. And look, we're getting this cooking, which is a piece of heaven as well. Oh, OK, know. so what are you up to now? Right, so I've got some garlic, which I'm just chopping now. I've got some ginger as well. And then once the onions are brown, we're going to start adding all these spices in. So we've got this, um, this beautiful um, spice mix here as well. It's yeah. called so berberry. It's, berberry. Yes, berberry. It's hot chilli, but it's mixed it with many kind of spices. OK, and is that yeah. fairly unique to Ethiopia, or do you get it from elsewhere? Well, we'll, we'll buy this, the, the, the chilli, the powder, yep. and then the, there is many spice we put together. The ladies, they prepare this one. Oh, jeez, I can smell that. Oh, I can. Taste, taste, taste that. Too. Taste it, Mike. Taste it. Taste, taste it. it. No, <laughs> <laughs> you reckon? Yeah, and, uh, taste it. OK, go no, on, taste good. a little it's, bit. It's amazing, because you get all those mm. different flavours, and it's, it's not that speak. spicy. Ooh. But then oh, it yeah. comes, <laughs> it gets spicy. Yeah, it's actually quite sweet to start off yes, with. Yes, now you can <laughs> stick, you know. Yeah. yeah, and then you can feel the burn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. Yeah. Okay, nice. Mm. Um, oh, I better check the onions. Mm. You, so can, you can help us if you want. Don't leave me yeah. in charge yeah. of the onions. I'll burn them. Yeah. Oh, oh, good. Yes, yeah. yes. And, uh, so is this spice mix like in a lot of, a lot of recipes then? Is yes. That sort of, you yes. Know, so if you have this in the cupboard, you can make lots of recipes from it. That's right, that's yeah. right, yeah. So, look, while you're doing the onions, I want to learn a bit more about the Ethiopian food. So when you think Ethiopian food, I wouldn't know what to think. So is, is chicken the number one, or, or is it the spices? What, what would it be? Well, a chicken is just only one. We yeah. have got plenty of types of foods, you know, kinds of food we make, you know. Just mainly we are using chicken and goat and uh, a fish and uh, beef. And a lamb. Nice. So I came to the land of the lamb, you know. Yeah, you and do. I'm enjoying you it. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> so it's a different types, you know. We have got a hot one, and then we have got even uh, just a non-hot one and a vegetable stew together. So what will happen just after everything is cooked? And there is a big uh, tray, round yes. trays, and we have got injera. We call this one is injera, you know. Okay. So we put on the tray. Yeah. So we put those different spices around. So you cut the piece from the corner and you roll it whichever you like Brilliant. and put it, I tell you, it's very filling, oh, it's very tasty. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So this we is like really filling interesting. and we like tasting. Oh, I tell you, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, now Mark's just looking after our chicken yeah. there. Right, so I've just got the chicken, so I've just seasoned it and then lemon juice on there as well. So I'm just going to make sure it's all coated, so quite generous on the lemon. And then this is just to sort of start the marinade and, and give us that nice sort of like a sharpness to the dish after. I'm right, pretty sure. So this one's marinated probably for about half an hour, just at room temperature. Nice, and we're using a rangatake chicken, aren't we? Yep. 
Okay, but then going cool. back to this bread, I mean, it, it was just explaining the process of this bread, you know, because it, it's a special grain that only grows in Ethiopia, so it's really hard to it's really hard to do anywhere outside of Ethiopia, and and it's fermented for like three days, isn't it? Yep. And then that gives it a nice sort of like sort of almost a sour taste, like a sourdough Ooh. bread, and it's great. And it's like a batter, and they cook it on this big um, like a, a, a pan over the fire. Mm. And then it just sort of bubbles up, and you can see so the heat from the bottom, and then it just bubbles up. It's great. I was, I was yeah. nibbling at it before. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's very soft, you know. Mm. Yeah. 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 Actually, it must be yeah. so nice, though, to give people a taste of Ethiopian food. You know, it must oh, be. Of course. What a great gift you're giving to New Zealand. Of course, we have to share because you open your door for us. You know, this this is the little we can give. You know. Yeah, and yeah. look, and <laughs> you're also giving back by providing that recipe to the Red Cross and yeah. people who buy that recipe book are yeah. helping out the Red Cross. So it is um, a complete. Circle of goodness. Um, that's right. Red Cross is the only agency who's helping the refugees, you know, supporting the refugees to settle in New Zealand. Right. Yeah. I so I that. came as a refugee. Yes. So just it's a privilege for me to work with the Red Cross. It's like paying back. No, and it's a privilege that we are here with you. Thank you so much. Well, we are back in the cafe kitchen with Dawitz and also Mark, and we are making a traditional Ethiopian dish. Now, apparently, before you get proposed to an Ethiopia, the girls need to know how to cook this. That's, that's sort of how it goes, isn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, it was. If they kept it here in New, in New Zealand, you know? Yeah. Sometimes the culture is evolved, you know? Oh, nice. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the onions, they've been browned down, and now we're about to add some of the spices. Yes, we just, yes. We just put yes. a splash of stuff. No, I'm, see, I'm doing it wrong yes. already. Yeah. No. What's this? So a little bit of tomato puree. Tomato yes. okay. It's tomato paste. Yeah. Oh, yes, just put this one. Yeah. And and then this is a spice mm. now. Well, so like I just it. asked him how much mm. of this do we put in, just yeah. a pinch, and he's like, no, no, put no. it all in. Put the yeah, whole lot in. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because you That's have the to taste of back home. Oh, sure, have yeah. To have a real taste of Ethiopia, no? Yeah. Yeah. A taste of Ethiopia. Yes, no, it tastes yeah. good. I tasted mm. it before. And then and then what's this as well? Because you brought this in as well. Yeah. So no, this is just we'll buy a bread just from any just uh, uh, groceries. Yeah. And we have got a, a different spices to mix it. The ladies, my wife is the one of the best one who can make this one. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a spice butter. Yes, we call it kabe. Oh, can I have a taste? Can I try it? Yeah, just want to have a wee, wee taste yeah. of it while you. Oh, okay, cool. So it is, yeah, butter and spice. It's butter, that's, yeah, yes, that's yes, yummy. Yes, yeah. Oh, nice yeah. work. Your wife did a good job there. Oh yes, 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 <laughs> yes. yes, yes. <laughs> And now what else do we have Don't to do? Don't put the rest of the stock in it? Yeah, we have to leave it a little bit on okay. fire for a few seconds. Okay, well, cool. Yes. No, we, well, I want to know your story, actually, because obviously, mm. you know, you came here as a refugee from mm. Ethiopia. What mm. was going on that brought you here? Well, uh, just when I was very young, I participated in politics in a low level, but mm -hmm. it doesn't matter in Africa if you are a low or high level. It's just if you are against the regime, your life is affected. So when I was arrested, I was 13. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So just uh, since my... I mean, young age, yes, I start to had to live in my own countries because I'm treated differently. And then and I, I don't agree also to live a human like uh, ostrich, you know? Right. While you see some things is unfair, it's not, I mean, right for uh, mankind to keep silent. No, you're right. Yeah, so just I have to run away. Two of my brothers, they run away from the countries through the border. And I'm the last born in the families, and it took 11 days to cross the border. Wow. Yeah, and so I crossed the border to Sudan. And in 1998, uh, 84, until 1998, I lived in Sudan as a refugee for 14 years. So I'm one of the lucky ones to be picked up by New Zealand and the uh, United Nations to come to New Zealand. Okay, yeah. and, and then the Red Cross helped you settle here, and that's what you do now for the Red Cross? Yeah, well, well since I came just, and I love to, because, you know, many people invested in my life, you know? Yeah. I've been touched by many hands. Okay, so this is my turn to teach the others. So I start to volunteering myself to translate and then um, help people and so. And later, uh, RMS, the organization at that time was uh, helping the refugees, yeah. refugee migrant service. And uh, they gave me just a casual con uh, contract job and later, you know, part-time job. And later RMS evolved to refugee service. And let's say refugee service just amalgamated with the New Zealand Red Cross. Yeah. So for the last over four years, and then we are New Zealand Red Cross. And our job is just in, uh, helping and supporting the refugees who are coming to settle in New Zealand. Oh, and that is a brilliant story. And the good thing about that is, is that meals, mm. you know, from 
their own countries helps as well, settles them, makes them feel welcome. Well, yes. You are such a good man. Yeah, yeah that is also this is one of our contribution to this society. Ah, you know? Love it. Okay, right, yeah. so that looks like it's ready now. No, what else yeah. do we have to do? Well, do and after the this, yes, we can put the chicken inside there. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and I know we've got some mm. eggs, so what are we going to do with the eggs? Well, the egg is that uh, uh, hard-boiled egg. Yeah. And then uh, just we'll keep it later, you know, after the... Oh, this so we're going to chop ready. it up and get it ready? Yes, yep. when it is ready. Oh, already Mark pr prepared it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, we'll put it. So, wait, you know, the New Zealand chicken doesn't take much to be cooked quickly. Yeah. No, the worries. So you okay. just want to slow nice. cook this now in the egg, sauce? A slow cook, the... Yes, slow cook so is better. Right you know? down. Yes. Well, mm. I tell you what, can't mm. wait to taste it. We'll see the finished product oh, very soon. Thank you for telling us your story as it's well. My, it's my pleasure. I think it's a great gift that you're giving back to the country and to Red Cross. It is absolutely brilliant. And remember, all of the proceeds of Taste of Cultures, the recipe book, will go to the Red Cross. So not only are you helping out, but you're getting some fantastic recipe. And now it's time to taste a very special dish from Ethiopia. Thanks to Darwin and Mark. Bring it over, guys. Wow, look at that. It looks absolutely fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Now, don't forget, wow. the proceeds Smell of Taste delicious. of Cultures go to the Red Cross. So get that recipe book so you can get other recipes. And this looks so good. Oh,